Welcome, friends. So for the month of August, we're going to be looking at the book of Ephesians, the epistle. So I ask um, if you have time during the week uh, to kind of catch yourself up uh, with the book of Ephesians uh, together. So many companies, many churches, nonprofits, they have a mission statement. That mission statement is to kind of let the consumer kind of know what, they, what their mission is with their business. So there's one that I'm going to name for you. It's three words. And you see if anyone knows what particular business this is. Food with integrity. Food with integrity. There's, uh, this business is um, in Seven Corners. That's Chipotle. Who's eaten Chipotle food before? Raise your hand. All right, very good. Chipotle, a well-known restaurant chain known for its burritos, insists on serving food with integrity. In the highly competitive fast food business, you have to respect a company that will not compromise its standards. Chipotle was in the news recently about serving size where some of their franchises weren't giving the full serving size. And the CEO, when he found out about it, he immediately worked to fix the issue. What's true for Chipotle is true for the church. The word integrity. Say that with me. Integrity. We hear from the epistle Paul, he says, There is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all things and through all and in all. Notice the word one is repeated seven times in three verses. So I'm going to repeat each one and ask you to repeat it back to me. All right, here we go. One body. One spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. At the heart of integrity in the church is oneness. It means that we are whole, the church is whole, complete, undivided, one set of values. A church with integrity is not going to show love in one situation and hatred in another. People really do prefer to worship and eat in places that have integrity. But a sign or website that says, church with integrity is not going to cause people to rush through the doors. Rather, it is how we live our lives out as a community of faith. Integrity requires deeds as well as words. Steve Ells, he's the CEO of Chipotle, knows this. He laughs when asked if their mission of food with integrity is the key to attracting customers. He replies, I don't think so. He's never seen anyone coming into his restaurant saying, oh, I want to eat food with integrity right now. Instead, customers care about taste, value, convenience. Integrity requires actions. And it's the same with the church. The beginning of the scripture for today says, I therefore beg you. And what's happening is we have this rift between the Jews and the Gentiles. And so for the first few chapters of Ephesians... Uh, Paul is saying to the Gentiles and the Jews that, yes, you can be living together in one body of Christ. Jesus died for you. Your sins are forgiven. And so I beg you, therefore, to be one in Christ and to work together. And he suggests that we live as a church with humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And then he talks about how the church is like a body, every ligament, every part working together for the unity of Spirit in the church. 
he begins that our work begins with humility and gentleness. And these are countercultural values in a world that seems to reward self promotion and individualism. But in the church, we work as a body, as a community, in humility and gentleness. Next come patience. And I bet if I asked everybody if you have issues with patience, we would all raise our hand and I would be the first to raise. We want what we want and we want it now. But God's work in the church takes time. It takes patience. It requires unity. It requires knowledge, maturity, and all of these Qualities take time just to communicate about issues that we have in the church. They can't be resolved right away, but they have to kind of like osmosis, just be part of our being so that we can work together for the unity of the church. We had the uh, U.S. government, the government came with the prisoner swap this past week. And I was thinking to myself, the amount of time that must have been taken for this to take place. The amount of patience, the amount of disappointment when things didn't work out. But in the end, there was a positive outcome. I think about with our United Methodist Church where we have had the, um, the split with the global and the United Methodist Church and how there was work to come together and it was hard. And it was decided it'd be better to be like a divorce and split. And yet we have splits all in our denominations. Why do we have to have denominations at all? It is something for us to work at in the lives of our church. And finally, we are to bear with one another in love. And I looked up the word bear. And it means to maintain every effort. To bear means that we just don't happen, but to bear means we're going to work really hard to make something work for us, to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the church. When we have issues, contentious issues, Paul instructs us not to attack each other, but to bear, to love, to endure. Admit it, friends. We find ourselves as a divided nation. We're divided on immigration. There's racism, sexism, rich versus poor, demographics. In today's culture, it seems like every division is emphasized, expanded, exploited, exaggerated. Everything is yes or no, and there's no room for compromise. And we see it especially in our political world today. Paul teaches us that in times of division, there is the belief that God loves all people. And we try to mold and shape our ministry here at Doolin Church as a place of love, of forgiveness, of reconciliation, and peace. So in a few minutes, we will have together the bread and the cup of Christ. And it is a place where we all come as God's children, all the same. Think of us as a family of God here. We're a mix of saint and sinner. We're a mix of struggle and victory. We're a mix of lost and found. And we need each other. Many times we hear about we're called to take off our clothes and to put on the clothes of Christ, which bind us together as children of God. So as we move forward into our life here at Doolin Church, let us abide by what Paul is exhorting us to do, to have humility, gentleness, patience, and bear with one another in love. So as we eat the bread today, as we drink from the cup today, remember those words, humility, gentleness, patience, and 
bearing with one another in love. Love is hard, but let us love. And my friends, that is the good news. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we all say together, Amen.